you know, it's very easy for the, the socialists of the day, the Bernie Sanders crew, to say that we should be more like Sweden. And Sweden, of course, is a very, very tiny country that was homogenous for many, many years, ethnically homogenous, that now has having all sorts of immigration problems. So Sweden was great until uh, the non-whites came in. Well, that's interesting. People can rewind that and rewatch that. Hopefully, you know, nobody over there at Media Matters pulls that clip. <laughs> With Skylar Turden. All right, welcome to uh, this installment of Devil's Advocate. I'm your host, Skylar Turden. Uh, today, we do have a, a guest on here who's been here by request. Um, so we do try and honor the audience requests here. Uh, he has a show now. Used to be, I want to make sure I'm clear here, used to be with the Young Turks and is now available at, uh, works with Blaze. So kind of a change there. You can go... Uh, Subscribe, sign up, support him, I guess, at blazetv.com slash Dave. Uh, Mr. Dave Rubin, thanks for taking the time to be here. Skyler, it, it's a pleasure to be with you. People say that I don't talk to people on the left enough, and I thought today we could just have a, a healthy exchange of ideas and see what common ground we can find. So do you have that like uh, patented or trademarked exchange of ideas? You say that a lot. We're working on putting it on uh, on a sweatshirt right now, uh, just trying to find the right distributor. All right, well, uh, distributor, I guess, before we get it, it's with Glenn Beck, so you work with him now. So I want to make sure I understand, before we get into cancel culture, that transition, what are you doing there, uh, the blaze now, with everyone else there who likely uh, only a few years ago were victimizing your marginalized class, uh, but tell me what it is that you're doing with him now. Well, I've decided to join the, the far right, uh, potentially suspected, uh, assumed alt-right uh, blaze, uh, which of course was founded by uh, Glenn Beck and has people like this Steven Crowder guy who's a real radical and, yeah. and Mark Levin and Ali Stuckey and a couple other people. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty out there far right group of people, uh, but I thought I would join them to to moderate them a little bit you know what i mean because i'm right. a little more centrist maybe i could moderate them and then of course you know uh people i think maybe from your community would say that i'm doing this for the money because it's a big grift and uh, i i do have to tell you that uh if you if you were going for the grift uh the grift would not be going to the side that gets called racist and homophobic and bigoted and all that you would you would go to the woke side so i just want to be on the record about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate you trying to throw me off the scent with this idea of big woke money, but uh, I'm not going to bite. So before <laughs> we can cancel, listen, cult. that 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 beanie looks pretty pricey. If you're asking me. Uh, well, I don't know what that is. I'm from Toronto. We call it a toque. Uh, so, but you no, know, listen, I appreciate. It. You can use the wrong term. I bet you also use the word irregardless. Let me ask you this. Um, cancel culture. I don't want to misrepresent you. We're going to talk about this as it relates to deplatforming. A lot of people have been complaining about it. How, are, how would you define or characterize sort of cancel culture? Because I know you fancy yourself an advocate for free speech at the forefront. Yeah, well, I do believe in free speech. I believe that the First Amendment in the United States, uh, the idea that is enshrined into law that you can say anything you want and the government can't stop you from saying it with with some seriously strict um, lines on what you can't say, meaning that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater and that sort of thing. And we have very, very specific libel laws. But outside of that, we have free speech. You are allowed to offend people. You're allowed to say what you think. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be consequences for it. People might not want to associate with you or something like that. Um, but what's happening now is that if you take any position outside of what the progressives on any given day deem good, and it changes every day. Is that a vape you've got there? Yeah, it's CBD. It's CBD. Nice, nice. No. Uh, yeah, it helps uh, with the concentration. I know. Well, it helps um, with my it helps with my stimulatory overload. So you know, I know <laughs> you guys don't think that's a real thing, but you know, no, uh, I don't want to interrupt you. I don't want to do what you know. I don't want to do what you guys do over there at the place. So I want to give you as much of the floor as possible, so it'll make it that much sweeter when I um, break down this house of cards. Just make sure you yeah. <laughs> make sure you put on your rainbow flag mouth guard so this tin can I kick doesn't hit you in the teeth. Well, for the record, I do believe in stimulatory overload because I'm on Twitter, so I understand all about that. But the point here being that on any given day, what the progressive woke 
uh, religion decides is good or okay or acceptable on any given day, if you take any position counter to that, they will often go after your job, they will go after your family, they will dox you, they will try to deplatform you. And this doesn't mean that everyone on the right is perfect, and, and the right has done some strange things over the years, but you know, we've got a little bit of a yin and yang here. And right now, by and large, the, the scary conservatives and libertarians are far more open-minded and decent and want to live in a society that um, that actually lauds having people with different opinions. And, 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 you know, I hate to say it, but you guys, the, the progressives, uh, you've, you've become a secular religion. And if anyone doesn't agree with you all the time, they must be destroyed. Uh, I don't, I don't consider myself a secularist or a, a member of any religion at all. You're not a secularist or a member of a religion? No, I'm so a you're pagan. Like, I, uh, <laughs> I do. I, I want to make sure that... So you believe that conservatives are more decent because they want to live in a world where they can yell the N-word or yell the F-word? Uh, by the way, I want to be clear, not f They want to yell like the F, you know, like a pejorative toward people from your uh, uh, marginalized group. You believe they're more decent because they believe in defending that right. I want to make sure I just... I'm not misrepresenting you here. No, well, first I should be clear. I am in no way marginalized. Uh, I am a human being with equal rights, equal rights that that you have, and that uh, I would imagine uh, virtually uh, everyone you know has. Um, but I, yes, I do want to live in a society where you're allowed to say whatever you want. You know, offense is on the side of the people who take it. So if you were walking down the street, let's say, and someone said, "Oh God." Look at that guy with his, uh, what, what, what do you call a beanie again? Toque. A toque and that ridiculous mustache and his, and his, you know, You're lesbian. You're over-enunciating the you. Toque. Toque. Yeah. Uh, you know, and his lesbian-like shirt and all of that. And someone said some mean things to you. Well, it's on you to decide whether you're going to take offense to that. But, but the option, let's say you said, okay, I'm not okay with someone being all right saying whatever they want to say. The option is we're going to start jailing people for speech. Now, of course, this is actually bizarrely where the, the left wants to go with this, which is why they label everyone Nazis, because why would you let a Nazi speak? So we're in a we're in a slippery slope here. And uh, yeah, and well, we I appreciate that Mr. Uh, Exchange of Ideas went straight to ad hominem. This is not a lesbian shirt. Uh, I purchased it at Orvis. There happen to be lesbians who shop there. Uh, but I consider myself an ally, and it's a beautiful experience, and sometimes we shop together, so I don't necessarily know how that's relevant to my ideas. But um, let's talk about sort of cancel culture, because you said you want an exchange of ideas, but you also seem to have a problem, and I see this with a lot of people on the right. They get upset when the free market uh, wins out, when there's a boycott, for example, and people get removed, or S SNL is a recent example, where this man uh, hurled a bunch of anti-Asian racial epithets. Uh, I can't believe a comedian said something mildly offensive. I, I, I you know, it's I'm trying. So to you work think that's acceptable? What he what he said? I, I want to understand. Like, do you, do you don't believe that NBC should have the right to monitor and, and control what goes out over their airwaves? Because that's the free market, right? They decided they didn't want this deplorable rhetoric. Uh, right. So well. Yeah, yeah. Well, N NBC is welcome to do what they want. They're a private company, right? And if they don't want to work with this guy because of something he said in the past, then then so be it. I, w I certainly wouldn't want the government forcing NBC to keep this guy, uh, you know, if they didn't want to as a, as a business decision. Uh, but that being said, you know, comedians... Um, I, like, I think you might occasionally work with this Steven Crowder guy. Do you know Do you know him? No, I, have, I cut him a wide swath, yeah. I've heard of him. Uh, yeah, so he or other comedians, say Jerry Seinfeld or Dave Chappelle or some of these guys, what a comedian has to do, George Carlin would be a good example, Bill Hicks, mm -hmm. uh, what a comedian has to do is get as close to the line of what's acceptable as possible to push the limits of the way we think about things. And occasionally when you do that, you're going to cross the line. So whether the guy intentionally said something racist or not, or whether Michael Richards from Seinfeld years ago, with, whether he was trying to be funny when he said the n-word repeatedly or whether he was being inherently racist i mean the point is these people need to exist in a in a in a free society that's going to be a little bit a, a little messy but uh i'll give you a good word for it the gestalt of all of that is what makes ideas flourish and that's the society i want to live in so the companies can decide who they want to work with and the people can decide 
uh, you know, what content they want to consume. Well, you, you say that, but you've also been along with many other members of the alt-right uh, on this crusade against <laughs> big tech and social media where you don't believe that they should have the right to control the speech in their platform, which effectively is like forcing them or having the government force them to amplify speech that they find hateful or disagree with. Why would you want to do that, for example, with a YouTube or a Twitter? Why don't they have the right, uh, the f same First Amendment rights, right? Corporations are people, to hear the, uh, not Glenn Beck, the other Mormon, Mitt Romney say it. Um, why is, why is that, that okay? Why, how is that consistent with your worldview? Well, first off, Skylar, I do have to correct your premise here because I've actually never called for any intervention. I've had discussions with this with people like Tucker Carlson, who does want some intervention now, and I've had people on the left, a guy like Eric Weinstein, who also wants some sort of intervention. My preference would be that the market can solve these things, and that's why I started my own tech company and we're building out some technology to free creators. But the real issue here is what are these companies? Are they platforms where everyone can be on there and then as long as you're abiding by the terms of service you can be on there and do whatever you want or are they publishers like you know cnn is a publisher of their content or the blaze is a publisher of uh, some of this radical right-wing stuff that you've mentioned here right and and then they have different responsibilities so if every time twitter or facebook or youtube if every time they censor someone it happens to be someone on the right then they've moved from being sort of an open platform to an actually a publisher of content and then there's different legal responsibilities my preference would be to just keep putting stuff out there in a way that they would treat us all fairly but if they're not going to do it then i'll make some solutions for myself. So I think that's pretty consistent with uh, the world view that I've been espousing. But have they ever argued that they're uh, a platform? Because it seems to me the idea of fairness would be predicated on the idea that they are a public platform. Have they ever made that claim or is that you copy pasting something there so that you have? No, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that uh, at even at congressional hearings, some of the, the big wigs there have have basically gone on the idea that they are platforms, although then when they talk it out a little bit more, they start sounding like publishers. But that's, you know, that's sort of in the weeds kind of legal mumbo jumbo. What, what I would say more broadly is that if you are someone who creates content, whether it's political stuff or video game stuff, or you're a knitter or an unboxer or a vaping expert, uh, you should be I trying to figure I didn't out claim to be an expert. I didn't claim anything. And I also don't do political content. I consider myself a, a citizen of the world of humanity, and we all have aligned interests well, if we're believing that we are all moving uh, toward the same path to enlightenment. I think some of us are further along the path, but I don't know. I wouldn't consider that politics. You think, you think fair. That's, that's a totally fair point. Let's say you were, a, you were into knitting lesbian shirts, whatever it might be. I would say that as bro. long it's as not a lesbian shirt i got it at, it's it's a very lesbian shirt oh it, this is no this one sorry this is eddie bauer um and i did go with my lesbian friend but she doesn't shop at eddie bauer she went to orvis afterward that's why i got confused because this is what happens with radicalization you know you threw that out like lesbian shirt and uh dave rubin which by the way lgbt are you you're the are you g or are you b I'm G, um, okay. but Full I don't G. want right. any. I, I, you know, I don't want any special credit for that. You can speak to me at normal speed, and uh, you know, you can use whatever pronouns you want. I'll be okay. The, the, that's fine. But you throw out lesbian shirt, and you mean that as a joke. But then someone else, you know, next thing you know. No, no, I mean that very seriously. It's a, it's a very lesbian uh, shirt. All right, and we all think this is super fun. This is what we can expect from the alt right, which is why they don't have any late night programs on main networks right now. But you know, my girl Lily saying now is out there at uh, NBC, so good for her. But here's the thing, someone else takes that, they expand upon that. They take that as license to mistreat people who wear quote unquote, you know, the lesbian uniform. Um, and then the next thing you know, I'm going to Eddie Bauer with my friend and she's getting abused. A hate crime is committed, right? She just wants to go to Orvis and buy it, but because Dave Rubin wanted to make a joke and thinks that that needs to be protected, uh, all of a sudden, marginalized classes have to live in fear. And so this idea of free speech that you're defending, I don't know if you've ever heard this, it actually is anti-free speech because it intimidates the oppressed into silence. Most of the lesbians I know are doing quite well. I don't know any oppressed lesbians. I know some pretty power. I'm in L.A. here. I know some pretty power lipstick lesbians who are uh, certainly 
not oppressed. But, you know, it's a, it's a fair point, and I, should, I really should think about that. I don't want to just look at someone in a flannel shirt and assume that they're a lesbian. You're right. I should work that through. I'm going to yeah. think about it. It's, it's, it's also not. Thank uh, you. It's also not flannel. It's a peak cotton. Um, let, but let me ask you: Where's the line? Then I guess that you think is acceptable. Uh, you said there are very clear parameters as to what's allowed on, on sort of social media. What you can say as far as free speech is the line at calling a black person the N word. Uh, like I said, the F word earlier, uh, or using or like lispy queer something like that which we heard before or you know racial pejoratives referring to someone as mexican what everyone has a line where is yours where does it cross into the realm of being unacceptable right so first off i would say that each of the platforms have their own terms of service and they can decide wherever that line is my personal line would be that if you are on one of these platforms because they've become our new ways of communication like you know 40 years ago, you had the telephone and everyone had access to the telephone, regardless of what you were saying on the telephone, as long as you were a, a free citizen in, in the United States, right? Um, so I would prefer that as long as you're not breaking any of the laws of the United States, that you could be on these platforms and be treated fairly. Now, the problem with that inherently is that you're going to get a lot of people that are going to say mean things. They are going to say the N word or the F word or the C word. Are there any other words that I have to say a letter for? Um, I prefer, yeah, I prefer to not use any of the pejoratives. So um, yeah. we, we, I use descriptors and I try yes. to use them in a way that is not as uh, stimulatory overloading as possible. Yeah, so that would be, a, you'd, you'd really have the whole letter, the A word, the B word, the C word, the whole thing. Yeah. But in any event, I would prefer that all of these platforms, because they are the they are the way we communicate in a modern world, that they let anyone on as long as they're not breaking the laws of the United States. Now, ironically, sometimes people in America or in Western countries get kicked off these platforms for not obeying the laws of Pakistan. So that's another problem. Uh, but I, well, I you're using an extreme example to make a point, Dave, and this is what you do. You act as though there's the United States and the Founding Father who had no idea that we could, the Founding Fathers, we had no idea that there would be uh, iPhones and social media. And you say, so we either have this Wild West, this completely sort of libertarian utopia in the United States, or Pakistan, right? I mean, what about all of the European countries or, or places like Canada that do have hate speech laws? in place yeah that's those are those are have you been to any of those places i i've just been i was on tour and i i performed in uh, in sweden and in uh, norway and in ireland and the uk and a bunch of other countries and you know they're very jealous actually of our first amendment um you know if you listen to the the lefties on twitter especially the blue check celebrities they'll say oh i just got back from europe and in europe people were saying to me what happened to the united states and it's just simply not true. I mean, I was there and people are absolutely jealous. They still look at the U.S. as a beacon of freedom. They look at our protections around speech and, and even around firearms and some other things as, as ways that the people can fight tyranny. So I'm for, uh, you know, it's very easy for the, the socialists of the day, the Bernie Sanders crew, to say that we should be more like Sweden. And Sweden, of course, is a very, very tiny country that was homogenous for many, many years, ethnically homogenous, that now has having all sorts of immigration problems, um, where we're a country that has brought in more people from more countries in the world than anywhere in the history of the world, and we've done it better than anybody. So I don't think there's a better place than this good old U.S. of A. I want to make sure that I understand. So Sweden was great until uh, the non-whites came in. Well, that's interesting. People can rewind that and rewatch that. Hopefully, you know, nobody over there at Media Matters pulls that clip. Um, I look forward to the Media Matters people pulling that. What one. about? Are, are, can what? I just ask you something about what? Media Matters? Yeah. Every time Media Matters gets retweeted into my timeline because I don't I don't follow any of these fools. These Media Matters is a non-profit organization, and they spend all all day. They spend watching. What scary people like this Ben Shapiro? Have you heard of this guy? This this you know four foot eight fast talking Jew. Oh yeah, well, uh, I they, had they, him on the program, and um, I mean it was, you know, and I want you to hold that thought. But yes, I did have him on the. Pro I do want to answer your question. I've heard of him. I had him on the show, and I've talked about this before as someone who I'm not a member of a religion, but I'm a very spiritual person. Yeah. And when Ben Shapiro was in the show, um, it was like looking into the lifeless eyes of a doll. <laughs> I truly felt spiritually disturbed, uh, like I was in a struggle uh, against evil. 
Um, I know Ben fairly well. I, I had coffee with him last week. I, I've never had that feeling about him. Um, but that may have been you were doing it via Skype and sometimes staring into that camera can, can be very soul sucking. You know, there's certain uh, there's certain tribes out there that don't like having their picture taken because they feel it steals the soul. You may you may have a distant relative in a, in a community like that. Oh, well, it only took us uh, 90 minutes to get to you uh, bad mouthing uh, tribes, which we uh, you hear that. I hear the sound of a dog whistle. You mentioned you were Sweden, Ireland, UK. Where else did you perform? Uh, Sweden, well, we went to Canada, which okay. is uh, up north here in the United yeah. States. We went to about 100 stops here in America. Um, definitely went to a couple other countries, you know. But nothing we, thought, like oh, we went to we went to Denmark. That's another socialist utopia. That's what yeah. that's what the lefties will tell you. Um, but I noticed no like know. South Africa or like Mozambique, oh, well, we, we did. Cleveland. Uh, <laughs> um, we did go to Cleveland, actually. Uh, oh. We didn't get to we didn't get to South Africa. We did go to Australia, though. Yeah. And, and do you know this about Australia? They've got kangaroos just running in public, so you're just driving your car in a kangaroo, just like that. Was that like another racial pejorative? No, no, a literal kangaroo. Really? Yeah. I'll need to make and sure I, I Urban Dictionary literal kangaroo because I'm just not I'm not always up. I don't like you said you don't follow media matters. I don't follow the neo Nazis and the alt right. Like I don't have David Duke in my timeline. So I don't know what literal kangaroo means, but I mean, I can guess based on the well, way this conversation went. Yeah, go on Urban Dictionary. I'm sure it's on there. Um, so let me ask you, you don't think that there would be any benefit in the United States to having European style hate speech laws? I'm mean, not talking about censoring speech. We're talking about speech that is hateful not being allowed in public discourse. You don't think that's not something you would be on board with? Skyler, you're you're a well-intentioned guy, and I I hear you. But you know the problem with that is who gets to decide what hate is, right? So your definition of hate might be a little more narrow than my definition of hate. And once we've given that power away to the government, uh, the the expansion of what hate is will basically keep growing until anything that is counter to whatever the the current orthodoxy is which in this case is usually some sort of postmodern leftist conflated lunacy uh everyone will be afraid to say anything so i would rather live in a society where somebody might say something you don't like they might and and you gotta buck up and keep trucking right man i would yeah. uh i would rather live in a society where we listen to the victims of perpetrated hate it seems to me it's pretty easy to determine listen to the people who are victims of hate speech not the ones perpetrating the hate speech right so if somebody said that you uh sexually assaulted them but right. could provide no evidence but said that they were a victim mm. would you be would you defend them for that well, I don't discuss that issue because um, that was put to rest from my sophomore year, and we don't need to talk about it anymore. Uh, but I do think that we should believe all women and investigate it, and unlike with, you know, for example, right now, new allegations about Kavanaugh. Uh, no one, there needs to be impeachment, so there's an investigation because no one believed any of these victims, uh, which I think is horrendous. Um, and it sounds to me like you're doing the same thing as victim blaming as it relates to victims of hate speech, be it racial, be it sexual orientation, gender. You know, I'm kind of old school here, and I would say that um, you need evidence to actually prove something. And if you can provide evidence, then we can have a chat. But just saying something happened um, in and of itself is, is not enough um, because they'll come for you, my friend. Even you, Skyler, who's, who's obviously a very upstanding, you know, very productive member of society and, and on the right side of all the issues you care about other people and minorities, but even you, they might come after you. One I day. don't consider myself a productive member of society, but that's because I don't consider myself, um, as far as society has not been inclusionary with people like myself. I don't consider myself the benefactor of current societal norms. That's why I'm a citizen of the world and humanity. And my life is not determined by the parameters of, of the legal structures that be or oppressive structures that be. It's determined by my path to enlightenment. So I understand what you're saying, but I don't consider myself a productive member of society. And I'm, I'm actually rather proud of that fact. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had my vape. Some of that would have made more sense to me. Uh, I'm, well, I, I don't think a vape is going to help you uh, if you don't understand what I said. It was pretty, pretty simple in plain speak. I mean, I didn't quite go on a, a, on a, some 
kind of a soliloquy like your your friend there, um, your alt-right friend, uh, Mr. Jordan Peterson. But um, I thought it was straight to the point. I'll let the audience make up their own mind. Let me ask you this, though. The market will not solve the problem of radicalization on YouTube, right? This yes. is something that's a real problem. There have been studies that have come out that have shown the alt-right and the alt-light. Even though you sometimes say you're not alt-right, but you entertain a lot of these people from that community, people migrate from your community into those uh, viewpoints. Do you not see that as a problem that as, as members of the human race, we should work toward fixing as opposed to relying on corporations to fix? Well, this is where I'd say it's, it's so great that we have a wonderful press, free press here in the United States, because wonderful newspapers like the New York Times, they cover stories like this. And you may have seen this uh, about two months ago in the New York Times. They ran a story about radicalization right on the cover of the Sunday New York Times, radicalization yeah. to the alt-right by YouTubers. And they included I was an unnamed like, source, yeah. People like my... <laughs> <laughs> they included people like myself. They included people, I believe, like Steven Crowder, who I've mentioned a couple of times. Again, shady character. Yeah. Uh, they included people like Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro and and, and, a, and some real radicals like Milton Friedman and Phil DeFranco. I mean, it was a real list. And then at the end of the article, they tell you this story of a, of a good liberal who sort of became alt right. But then guess what? It's so great. He was saved by lefty YouTubers and then ended up as a progressive. So the important thing is that we have a good media that's going to watch and safeguard our freedoms and not throw people under the bus and try to destroy people and smear people. And uh, even with Kavanaugh right now, the New York Times is doing such wonderful work. And it's so great that uh, that they they're still out there doing it. What do you what do you mean by that? I assume you're being facetious, but it seems to me like if uh, Kavanaugh forced his uh, his uh, his twigs and berries in the lady's hand, that that should not be a, a person sitting on a Supreme Court. Well, you know, again, they're going to have to provide some sort of evidence, but that's not really what they're interested in doing. You might have picked up I was being a little sarcastic there. Yeah. You, you did you did get me well on i that wasn't one. entirely sure because i thought maybe you weren't familiar with the facts of the case interesting talking about um radicalization i see you um mr dave rubin as a byproduct of that i mean you used to be with the young turk for a while and then you uh, said that that you didn't leave the left the left left you which i believe you, you copied right into a bumper sticker and now you're all the way way over at the the blaze i don't even know how you could define yourself as a centrist anymore but yeah. you certainly veered more and more far right do you not see yourself as the byproduct of radicalization these people you've mentioned the ben shapiro's of the world the the intellectual dark web like you have changed as a person and that's alarming well, Skyler, uh, I have I would say I have a radical belief in human freedom. Uh, I believe that you, Skyler, know what to do with your life better than anyone else. I believe that if the government gets out of the way, that you can figure out what is best for you and your your uh, girlfriend or boyfriend or lesbian friend. I believe that you within the community that you live, if you're given the opportunity to be free and the government doesn't take a lot from you and just makes sure that we aren't killing each other and stealing from each other, uh, that that is the best way for human flourishing. And the same would go for me or anyone else. Even that radical guy, Stephen Crowder, who I keep mentioning, you know, who's got pretty out there political beliefs. I want even someone as radical as him to live freely. So what I would say is if, if being for freedom is far right, then yes, I would say I'm a, a far right radical. There you go. Far right radical. I appreciate it. We'll take that clip. Um, yeah, I think that's important to note, though, that uh, people are, are free, like you said, to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. But then we have these ramifications. And it seems to me that people on the right don't like the ramifications, whether it's Dave Chappelle or Bill Burr or um, this recent SNL example, that uh, they want there to be a balance on these these networks um, or even social media, which just doesn't seem tenable with the position of believing in freedom. That's what I have a hard time understanding. Well, we do have a certain imbalance of who can say what and when they can say it. So the uh, SNL issue right now with the comedian, what's his name, by the way? I don't even know his name. Do you, do you know his name off the top of your head? Uh, was Higgins. Something Higgins. Dustin so, you know, he, he he said he said something offensive uh, to the Asian community and SNL decided to fire him. But 
the idea that Saturday Night Live was, which once, by the way, was an edgy comedy institution, and I didn't even realize it was on. So when I anymore, I thought, you know, I started seeing all these tweets about SNL. I thought, my God, they're back after 20 years. Um, you know, right. it's sort of like the, SNL is sort of like the New York Times of comedy shows. It's it's done, but you know, the name SNL, the name New York Times, they still remain. But the the essence of what they once were are gone. But you know, it's like, are you going to f- go through what every one of those edgy comics like Eddie Murphy uh, said? over the years, the, the brilliant comics, Chris Rocks, right? Are you going to go through what they said and find out, well, any of them said the N-word or said this or said that or said something offensive and now we got to fire them? So again, NBC can do what they want. Um, but once you start taking out the comics, it is a it is a seriously dangerous situation. So that's why even a comedian like Steven Crowder, again, who I've mentioned here, who's, yep. a, who's a hate speech monger and tried to destroy the career of a wonderful young journalist from a, a fantastic lefty publication called Vox, which is just a bastion of, of truth and fighting the power. It is. Um, he did, even, yeah. yeah, even Steven Crowder, I would be for him being able to say what he says. And, and I, you know, he's he's as bad as it gets, but I'll defend him. I will. Um, well, after this interview, maybe someone might be uh, knocking him off the ledger. You know, you did say you do believe it's the government's job to at least prevent people from killing each other. You know, you said make sure that people aren't committing violence. But it seems to me, if I've uh, combed through your, your talks uh, quite effectively, that you do acknowledge, I think you try to do so with an Islamophobic grant, that the Quran, some people use it to inspire violence. Words can cause violence, right? So you acknowledge that. So isn't that within the purview of government regulation? Because words can lead to violence, and that's really where the conversation is taking place. Well, it is true that words can lead to violence in that anyone could hear anyone speak and construe any thought in some way that perhaps it was intended or perhaps not. But we do have laws against a direct call to violence. Uh, But I would say that any religious text, whether it's the uh, Old Testament or the New Testament or the Quran or anything else, is worthy of criticism, is worthy of uh, of looking at with a skeptical eye. And it's not, and criticizing a set of ideas because a religion, as I'm sure you're well aware as a pagan, a religion is just a set of ideas that are worthy of criticism. And, and if you want to follow the words in that text, that's fine too. Uh, but a set of ideas is also a political platform or or anything else. A set of ideas is what governs our ability to play sports. There are certain certain rules and you should be able to be critical of any of those things. What you don't want to be is bigoted towards people. So I would never say, oh, there's 10 Muslim people over there. They all must think the same thing. What I would want to do is talk to them like I would talk to any other person and say, oh, you have one set of ideas, you have another set but, of but ideas. But some people set. do, is my point. Some people would make that generalization, and you are defending their right to make that generalization on what you have referred to. I'm not sure that Facebook or YouTube has asked for this. I'll have to fact check it. A public form, a, a, a public platform. You are defending their right to say that, which can lead to violence. And, and that's my point, especially as someone from a marginalized community. I mean, you know, we don't need to go back that far to see what was happening to the G's and the LGBTQ. Um, yeah. When you say marginalized, oh, so you're talking about gay. I thought, because I'm a lefty, I, I write with my left hand. That's what I thought you were talking about. No, and as you know, well, we, no, we, also, we, die, we die a couple of years earlier than, than you people, which left, is how we refer to you, by the way, you people. Left-handed people die earlier? Yeah, we die a couple of years earlier because, you know, the whole world is a righty world. So we crash into walls more often. Right. The scissors, it's a lot. Yeah, well, I, I would think you probably probably even out because you're short. So taller people five, die younger. Five, five foot, 11 and a half. And, and if I'm on vacation, really rested, I'm, I'm a good six foot. Well, you know what? That's uh, something that everyone from five, nine to six foot like to claim the six foot margin. But again, I, you know what? Let's, let's hand that to you. I don't want to get off in the weeds here. I want to help unpack this as uh, you've talked about. But um, it, 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 this is important. If you may not do that, some people will. Some people will uh, attack or use their words to encourage violence against marginalized communities. And I do wonder, as someone who benefited from, is a, is a benefactor from progressive ideas, you know, uh, like gay marriage, why it is now that you want to close that door behind you for other marginalized classes. Well, what I would say is that 
when you're talking about progressive ideas, I think what you're really talking about are equal rights. And equal rights is a core tenet of classical liberalism and, and conservatism in that I want everyone, and this is a radical idea, so you're going to have to kind of sit in this one. I want every member of society, so let's talk about this from an American perspective, to have the exact same laws govern them. I don't want any special treatment for anyone based on your gender or your sexuality or the color of your skin or your religion. I want us all to be treated exactly the same. Now, I can't force private people to use the pronouns you want. I can't force a private company to hire you or not hire you. I can't make sure that there's no bigotry or racism because it's part of the human condition. But what I can do is fight for true equality, which uh, which just means that we're all treated equally. Then it's going to take hard work. It's going to take a little luck. It's going to take all. It's going to take your your family and community connections. Uh, but that's the beauty of life in a free Western society. It's like it's not exactly even all the time, but at least the rules are even. So I will always fight for equal rules for everybody. I, I don't agree with what you just, you said uh, it's part of the human condition. Um, I disagree vehemently. I think it's part of societal conditioning, which is also why I don't uh, agree with the precepts of, of gender and the gender binary. And that's why I don't consider myself a member of, of society. I consider myself a member of the human race, right? A global citizen, because I don't believe that humans are bigoted. I don't believe it's a part of the human condition. I believe particularly it's a part of the conditioning in Western society. Um, and I should clarify, I say pagan, uh, pagan for the layman to understand. Um, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a Levian uh, Satanist. Really, it's a, a lapsed Levian Satanist, if you want to use a term, which is effectively an absence of beliefs, but a rejection of the classical Christian power structures that be. So we're not sitting there with, uh, you know, an altar at Bohemian Grove. We actually simply don't believe in the archetype of God uh, as it's been uh, sort of preached. That's, that's... Well yeah. The beauty of what you're saying there, of course, uh, Skylar, is that I believe that you, you strike me uh, as a very moral, decent person. And at a macro, uh, sorry, at a micro level, of course, one can have no particular set of beliefs uh, and still live a moral life. But the question is, uh, well, not even a moral life, a, a just a decent human life that's set up for other people to flourish as well. The question is, at a macro level, at a societal level, can the set of ideas that you just laid out maximize human flourishing and would we ever be able to believe in the same things so that we could build a society that could withstand the forces of barbarism and totalitarianism and authoritarianism that's the question my friend i i, I hope you'll ponder that one a little bit well it sounds to me they're like you're advocating uh, collectivism when you're talking it does take a village and i would say this as far as it relates to society um and i understand what you're first off let me ask you this in club before we go two questions what yes. is uh where can what are you doing with the blaze what's the programming there it's at blaze tv.com slash dave we do have to go in a, in a moment yeah well it, it, yeah it's blaze tv.com slash dave and you'll get a 48 hour window on the new episodes of the rubin report uh and it was a way of me securing all my digital properties because uh the radicals are coming for all of us and i know we may differ on where the radicals are um but yeah i've always found you to be respectful and decent and uh Hopefully you can spread that amongst some of your comrades. I, I, I will do my best. Uh, and I would say the same about you if you didn't go straight to the lesbian shirt and trashing our sponsors uh, like with Orvis or Eddie Bauer. Um, but I would like to ask you this, as you mentioned society yes. sort of collectively, if we can agree to the same values, and then I'll express my view. But I, what this is collectivism that you're advocating. What would you like to see? How would you like to see society go forward? Since I know you've railed against deplatforming, cancel culture. How would you like to see the current state of our discourse improved? What would you change about, quote unquote, cancel culture? And um, how would that look? Yeah, well, just to be clear, Skylar, I am not advocating for collectivism. I'm advocating for what the founders wanted, which is that we have certain, we have God-given rights that the government is there to protect. The government doesn't give us rights. It can protect those God-given rights. And then those rights are laid out in the Constitution and in the Bill of Rights. What I'd like to see going forward is uh, more people, more good, decent uh, progressives like yourself uh, willing to talk about these issues. Uh, clearly, the vape is helping you sort of, you know, take a more open approach to this. And I think what's happened, unfortunately, is that most progressive these days, uh, they believe that they 
in and of themselves, that their own mind is knows exactly what's right and that everything that came before them was bigoted and racist and awful and they're going to have to hate their grandparents and they're going to have to hate Barack Obama one day because he ran against gay marriage the first time and a whole bunch of other things. So I hope that the progressives will take a moment and pull us back from the ledge because I believe that uh, most people that live here in these United States of America are pretty decent. And by the way, my dog, Emma, who's been here this whole time, she's been very quiet. She, she, uh, she agrees with me too. It's not, it's not such a terrible place here, the good old US of A. Well, um, I appreciate that. I appreciate you bringing Emma into the conversation. Uh, I did realize after uh, our last couple of uh, conversations here on Devil's Advocate that we do need more equal representation of uh, our, our, our sisters, of course, in the good fight right now. I would say this. Emma identifies as a cat, by the way. Uh, well, I think that's very cute, and I appreciate you trying to make a joke there about a very serious situation where we have uh, transgenders being afflicted and uh, attempting suicide in record numbers, but I'm glad that that's fodder for a joke. Maybe you can audition for SNL soon. I will say this. Calm down there. I will say this. Um, I understand your view, and you don't think it's collectivism. I do believe that it is collectivism as far as a fundamental value of society. You invoked Yahweh. You invoked God. You invoked a bunch of white racist slave owners and the founding fathers. I would say this. I believe that society, and I believe that the, the human race is fluid. I believe that we can change who we are. I believe that together in uh, one love, and the spirit of one love, we can change how we interact with each other, and so as it relates to society and its fluidity. I won't invoke those people, but I will invoke um, the, uh, the wonderful master, Bruce Lee. Be water, my friends. Thank you very much, Dave Rubin. I appreciate you taking the time. And, um, you know, listen, I'll send you a, a peak cotton shirt when we're done with this and uh, don't knock it till you Can die. I just, since, since you used a quote there, can I just throw in one quote that I like that I think might help you a little bit? No, I, I don't like this it. This is, I'm just going to throw it in here. This is from an, an incredible leader throughout time. This is from Optimus Prime, who was the leader of the Autobots, who, of course, were fighting Megatron, Starscream, Soundwave, uh, the Decepticons. Optimus Prime said, freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Think yeah. about that, my friend. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Bruce Lee because he was a sentient being and not a giant robot in a Michael Bay film. If you enjoyed this installment of Devil's Advocate, please click one of these boxes. You can see the other installments with Ben Shapiro, uh, with uh, Jordan Peterson, and other folks who we've had um, on this program. And I use the term folks very lightly. Uh, and I want to clarify that there's nothing... Um, lesbian about this shirt and we value and respect the wonderful and elegant uh same sex attracted wonderful women and z's of our community and um this uh as much as it's mocked i do advocate for um cbd for people out there who do have uh conditions like um lyme or self-diagnosed um ulcerative colitis which is not an affliction to uh to make light of <laughs>